Hello there, LinkedIn family. Jonathan here from Some Talented People, and uh, I'm here today in my uh, capacity as a, a champion for the LinkedIn Me Too calls because it's become evident to me now that I speak to my female contacts about this issue that there is a lot, a lot of inappropriate messaging, contacting for um, uh, romantic liaisons, scams, um, and, and general lying behavior. And we see the only way to stop this is to bring these stories to light so that with the original Me Too movement, women who are also experiencing this go oh yeah that happened to me as well and they follow the page because if we can get 20,000 30,000 followers then we can say to LinkedIn listen this is bad this needs to change so if you're a woman watching this who's been getting inappropriate and unwanted behavior or attention through LinkedIn, then please connect with me or my co um, helper, uh, Gregory Austin. In fact, actually it was his idea this page. So uh, we both uh, think that this behavior is outrageous and we want to get it stopped. So today we're listening to, to three ladies. We're listening to Anusaya, Mary Lynn and Oya, who are going to tell us about their experiences and what they find when they're dealing with LinkedIn. So let's go to our first guest. So I'd like to introduce our first guest, a lady that I am connected with and I've spoken to on several occasions and her name is Oya and let's hear a bit about your professional uh, aspects please. Hello everybody, my name is Oya Emery Wilson. I'm the founder and owner of Pebble Marketing UK, based in Buckinghamshire, Aylesbury in the UK. Um, been running the business now for 14 years and being self-employed and growing the business has just been absolutely phenomenal. And social media has really, really helped me uh, propel myself and the business and precisely what I do, which is telesales and telemarketing to a number of people um, from one man bands through to um, multi level organizations. Um, and I've had a lot of communication, both virtually on the phone and, and also through networking being getting approached by people which is what I do and I approach um, predominantly everybody over the phone and I think the way that we converse and treat other people not just over the phone but face to face really is a core of what I do not just for my business but also for the businesses that I represent i.e my clients However, on the flip side, there is various, um, if you like to call it, unwanted attention from the other party, being males, mm -hmm. trying to connect with me on LinkedIn. And for me, LinkedIn is only a professional social media platform, yeah. only professional. That is it. If I wanted to hook up with friends, I'd go to Facebook. If I wanted to hook up with um, a prospective partner, I'd go to Tinder or a dating site. There are others out there. LinkedIn is not a friend site, nor is it a dating platform. But members of the opposite sex sometimes like to treat it like this. And... I tend to deal with them like I deal with um, objection handling. Okay. Block them next. That is what I do. I don't take it to heart. Um, I know what they're fishing for. I'm a bit wiser than, you know, perhaps 20, 30 years ago. Um, and th I just block them. I, I'm just really not interested. It is quite apparent on my LinkedIn page if somebody... Um, would want to delve into all the posts that I am married and very, very happily married. Um, but 
I do get a lot of inquiries and invitations to connect with men, particularly from the American or an American military background. Well, I was having a chat with one of our first contributors, Gazelle, and um, American military and British military are not allowed to have social media. So every one of those ones you've received that you think is American military is a scammer at the very first level. And so whether or not they even make it a, a, a romantic advance, they are fraudulent. So I've worked in sales all my life and salespeople are a certain type. Ironically, the type that we associate with sales is not the type that make the best sales, but that type of person, do you think that it's more prevalent for you? In what aspect? Well, because you're dealing with people that are naturally trying their luck, I suppose. Um, whether I'm getting a telephone call from a salesperson, male or female, or whether I'm getting a genuine inquiry through LinkedIn for somebody to sell um, or inform me of their um, products or services, I will always hear them out. If I don't have time to speak with that person, I will let them know and ask them to call back in however many weeks or months. If I feel that somebody hasn't delivered their sassy pitch, shall we, shall we say, with, <laughs> which is what I do, um, within 20 seconds, and they are just rambling, they haven't introduced themselves um, properly and coherently, then I'm not interested. Um, to me, that isn't um, a good sales pitch. Likewise on LinkedIn, um, I will have people try approach me to introduce me to their products or services. And more often than not, I will have somebody within my network that provides exactly the same thing. And I will usually approach my network or my clients for those products or services. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that's basically the deal, isn't it? We've That's the deal with relation, business relationships is that you help each other out in business. I'd like to expand, we're waiting for two more guests uh, today, um, but I'd like to expand Gregory. So we started this because of unwanted sexual and explicit approaches, but let's expand it out while we're here to, to look at that because I have my email on my LinkedIn profile and I have not had a lot, but I've had the blanket sales email. Um, which is also bad behavior because, so I've had more than 20 who come to me for web design offerings. And I go, have you done your due diligence? We're a web design company. So what's your view on professional bad behavior in all its permutations? Um, 